Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to see how to check for unchecked errors in a Go application. So this may sound like a confusing topic, but it really is something that all developers should be doing when they're developing Go applications. So let's let's take this story for example. You're developing an application, uh, you're using API functionality that returns errors as well as other results. You decide, hey, I'm, I'm too cool to check for that error. So I'm going to use the underscore character or, Hey, I'm using this command that returns only an error, but you know what? I'm not actually receiving that error. I'm not checking to see if an error actually existed after running that command. Um, these are things that you probably don't want to do, especially if you want to develop good applications, you want to check for every error that every command could possibly throw. So this is what we're going to be doing. We're going to be checking to make sure that we've actually tried to look for errors and you'll see what I mean. So up on my screen, you'll notice that I do have a very simple Go application. If I were to run it, it should run fine. So I say go run main.go. It prints out uh, some JSON as well as the object itself, because at the end of the day, this is only a 23, 24 line uh, program. It just has a uh, struct. It has some JSON annotations. I'm doing some marshalling and unmarshalling of JSON. So the catch here, on line 20, notice that I'm using the underscore because if I type in json.marshall, you'll notice that based on this type ahead, it returns a slice of byte or an error. So I'm actually using an underscore to say, hey, I, I don't really care about the error. I only want the data. Or in the event of this json unmarshall on line 22, so json.unmarshall, you'll notice that it does only return an error, which I'm not actually looking for on line 22. So if those errors do happen to occur, maybe data, this fails for some reason, I'm not going to know about it because I've chosen not to look at uh, the error for marshalling. And if unmarshalling fails for any reason, I've again chosen not to look at the error. Now in this example, I've pretty much controlled the scenario and it's probably not going to fail on me, but there's plenty of other scenarios that would fail. So let's take a look at accommodating this. So in my web browser, I do have this Git project open. So this Git project is called error check. It's actually an application that we're going to install. And what it does is it allows us to check for these circumstances. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this command as part of the install instructions. I'm going to go back into my application or my terminal and I'm going to paste it in and I'm going to run it. Now it successfully installed. I didn't get any kind of errors. So I'm going to clear my terminal and I'm going to run error check period. So it's going to check within this relative path. It says command not found. The reason for this is because this bin directory within my go path is probably not within my uh, computer's uh, just path variable. So I don't have access to run that particular command. So I could overcome this by saying something like uh, export. I'm going to say path equals path and then I'm going to say go path slash bin. Uh, and you can set this up a million other ways. It's going to be different for Windows, Linux. I'm on a Mac. Uh, you probably want to make this a more permanent solution. But for now, this this will work for us. So I'm going to hit enter. And I'm going to clear. And I'm going to try that error check command again. So I'm going to say error check. And I'm going to say period. You'll notice that this time it ran. It said that I have an unchecked error on line 22. Uh, which is this unmarshal un right here. Uh, and that's true. So what I can do is I can say error equals, I'll use a colon because this is the first time I'm using it. Uh, and I'll say if error not equal to nil. And if it does, I'm going to say panic, whatever that error is. And we know there's no error for this particular example, but we've, we've caught the fact that, Hey, I'm not, I wasn't checking it. So I saved it. I'm going to run that command again. This time around, nothing happened. Uh, but wait a second. We're not looking at the error on line 20. So we can actually pass in command line flags to this particular application. Um, so for example, I can say error check. I can pass in blanks. So I'm going to check for blanks, uh, which would be the underscore. And I'm going to use the relative path here. So you'll notice that it's actually found it on line 20. So let's go ahead and fix that. So I'm going to say this is going to be an error. Now, 
because I've just used it on line 20, I probably want to remove the colon on line 22. And I'm going to do another check. I'm going to say if error not equal to nil. And I'm going to say maybe panic again. And this is going to be error. So I'm going to save it. I'm going to run that error check blank again. Well, I've now checked for all of my possible errors. And if I run the, run the application again, I'm going to say go run main.go. You'll notice that the application still does run as expected. So if I go back to my browser, the plug that I'm using is called error check. Uh, this is very valuable, especially if you want to make good Go applications because you want to check for your errors. I know that it's it's very easy to underscore them or not, not check for them at all uh, because maybe it's inconvenient. But if you want to write a good application, check your errors, handle, handle any kind of problems that occur within your application so that way the end user experience is going to be that much better.